Chapter 7 Sean did not know what to reply. He massaged the space between his eyebrows and accepted the message request. Hubby, will you be home for dinner? Catherine sent another text within seconds. Sean. No, don't call me that. Seanoreen. Fine then, I'll call you Shawnee. It's a cute name. He did not know what else to say. Was it too late to back out of the marriage arrangement? Later that night, the group of people was enjoying dinner in the interestingly designed courtyard-style restaurant. The bunch of lawyers exchanged their opinions on the new cases recently taken in by the law firm. Sean listened absent-mindedly when he heard a notification alert on his phone again. Catherine sent him a picture. Under the illumination of the soft yellow lights, the chubby cat was indulging itself in a small treat of dried fish. Seanoreen. Seanie, don't worry about us. I'm taking such good care of little fudge. Sean sighed grudgingly. The greedy cat had been bribed effortlessly. The time was 9.30pm. The passcode entered unlocked the door. Sean was evidently stunned the second he set foot into the house. It appeared that his house had undergone a complete makeover. The black couch was decorated with peacock blue cushions. The white dining table was covered in a green tablecloth with a wave pattern. A glass vase filled with pink hydrangeas sat quietly above it. The entire house was decorated with green plants and fresh flowers. There were also several hanging baskets out on the balcony. Was this still his house? Did he enter the right place? Shawnee, you're home! Catherine walked out of the guest room wearing a long sleeve silk sleeping gown. Several white bunnies were printed on the wine red material of the gown. Her thick and long brunette hair that was the colour of milk tea was draped over her shoulders. Beneath the hem of her gown were her fair, slender legs. She looked like a seductive vixen. Sean's eyes darkened. Who allowed you to dress like that around here? The brows on his forehead twitched into a frown as he said sternly. Like what? The woman swirled innocently. My boobs and butt are well covered. Only my knees and calves are showing. All the young girls go out in the streets dressed like this. What's wrong about it? He did not know where to look. Indeed, she was not wearing revealing clothes, but she was also not wearing anything underneath the nightwear. The man averted his gaze. I agreed to let you move in, but I didn't give you permission to do this to my house. Isn't this better? It was too empty before that it didn't even feel cosy like a home should. Catherine showed him her palm. A hint of flirtatiousness was detected in her tone. Look, I even have a few cuts on my palm from moving the plants around. He lowered his gaze to have a look. Indeed, there were a few tiny cuts on the tender skin of her delicate palm. You deserve it. He uttered softly before retreating to his room. Annoyed, she pulled a face at his departing silhouette. This man did not show any care for women at all. She would not be trying so hard to please the cold man if not for the plan to become her ex's aunt. 7 a.m. the following day. Sean's biological clock woke him up early every morning at the same time. He bumped into the woman who was brushing her teeth in the bathroom. Good morning, Shawnee. Are you going for a morning run? Catherine's eyes landed on his sportswear. The basic black outfit felt like a classic style on the man as if he was the spokesperson for the brand. The man had a bad temper, but his impeccable appearance was undeniable. Besides, the habit of going out for morning runs showed that he was a man of discipline. Yeah. Sean was a little surprised. Young women at her age were not normally early risers. Well, don't get breakfast before you come home. I'll prepare something for you. She spoke like a proper housewife. It's more hygienic than store-bought food. He frowned. No need for that. When are you planning to move? Her pretty face froze for a split second. Although we're married, I don't want to get too involved with you. Don't waste your time on me, because I'm not interested. 
he replied. Then he left the house. Catherine pulled at her hair slightly as tears immediately welled up in her eyes. She stood there motionless in the living room for a brief moment. Quickly, she collected herself and started making breakfast. The man returned after jogging around the park. A delicious smell came from the kitchen, making him hungry in an instant. I made breakfast. There are churros and cinnamon rolls. She poked her head out from behind the kitchen door while wearing a light green apron that was dotted with little daisies. I don't like sweet things for breakfast. He refused coldly. The straightforward remark he made earlier this morning was meant to drive her out of the house. Unexpectedly, she stayed behind and even made him breakfast. Would the food she made be edible? At first glance, she looked like a pretty spoiled young lady who had never done a single chore in her life. He was accustomed to seeing women like her. Jean retrieved a carton of fresh milk from the fridge. Catherine pouted. It appeared he was determined not to try the food she made. What a pretentious man. Regardless, she had no problem enjoying the food herself. She returned to the kitchen to continue making churros. He appeared a few seconds later to warm up the milk. From the corners of his eyes, he noticed the woman shaping the dough into several long sticks in a practiced manner before placing them into the hot oil. Within seconds, golden logs floated to the top of the oil. They released a delicious smell that attacked his nostrils. A hint of light flashed across his eyes. This skill must have been acquired from years of practice. He shifted his gaze downward. Beautiful cinnamon rolls with chocolate swirls were baking in the hot oven. Her cheeks were tinted with a rosy pink because of the heat in the kitchen. Her skin was unquestionably beautiful. She did not have the defined, sharp jawline that was favoured by most social media celebrities nowadays. Her slightly chubby cheeks made her appear youthful and adorable. Catherine noticed him staring and playfully picked up a churro waving it in front of his eyes. Shawnee, are you sure you don't want a taste of this? Not interested. He averted his gaze and placed the milk inside the microwave. Then, as if out of habit, he placed a piece of bacon between two slices of toast and shoved in a handful of lettuce. He started munching on the sandwich by the dining table. The sandwich in his mouth suddenly tasted bland when he thought of the golden brown churros. Frustrated, he covered one side of the toast with a thick layer of fruit jam. Right then, the woman reappeared from the kitchen and placed a whole feast in front of his eyes. Churros, cinnamon rolls, pancakes, a cup of hot chocolate. Sean twitched his brows into a deep frown as she blinked innocently. Shawnee, you don't mind me eating here, do you? He watched on silently as she began the show. Her performance was better than he expected. Please forgive me for having a sweet tooth. I really can't endure having to start the day with a bowl of boring cereal or a plain sandwich. It would be a huge disappointment for my taste buds. Then she took a massive bite of the churros. She closed her eyes as a look of satisfaction washed over her face. Mm, the flavour just bursts in your mouth. Mm, it's so delicious. He remained silent. What a waste of talent that this woman did not pursue an acting career. How could he still eat his plain sandwich now? Chapter 8 It's a must to enjoy warm pancakes with high-quality butter. Then a sip of hot chocolate to go down with it. Catherine continued on with the eating show. She was savouring every bite of food in earnest taking her pretty face into account as well. Her performance was way more entertaining and convincing than the other eating broadcast shows available. Sean could not take any more of this. At the same time, Fudge leaped onto the dining table while wagging its tail. Thinking the cat must be hungry, he walked over to the cupboard. He returned with a plate of cat food and placed it before Fudge. Fudge sniffed it for a few seconds before turning its head away. It looked at Catherine with greedy eyes. 
An awkward expression flashed across the man's face. She suppressed the desire to laugh before feeding the cat a small piece of the cinnamon roll. The little cat devoured it within seconds. Good kitty. She patted the cat on the head lovingly. You have much better taste than your owner, she thought to herself. Sean felt embarrassed. After the cat ate two more bites of the cinnamon roll, it went on to enjoy the churros. This put a frown on the man's forehead. You. Catherine seized the opportunity and shoved a piece of churros into his mouth. A hint of anger flashed across his eyes. Just when he was about to spit it out, the crispy outside of the churros that were coated with cinnamon sugar melted on his tongue. Instinctively, he began chewing on the dense dough. It was crispy on the outside, but soft on the inside. It was delicious. Surely he had had churros before. The cooks from Hill Household could make numerous kinds of food, but nothing tasted as good as this. For some reason, the churros that she made brought out the creamy flavour of the milk without making it sickly. Is it nice? Catherine asked, cupping her chin with both hands. She was confident in her cooking. The light went out of his eyes when he noticed the smug smile on her face. It's just all right. Then he picked up another piece of churros and continued eating. The small bite from earlier was not enough for him to taste its full flavor properly. She winked playfully. Didn't you say it's just all right? Surely you can't finish all these. I don't like wasting food. The man replied calmly. She parted her lips to retaliate, but he interrupted with a frown. Keep quiet during meal times. <sighs> Catherine gasped in astonishment as she had never seen anyone so shameless. He had said coolly that he did not like having sweet foods for breakfast, but he was now devouring the churros, pancakes, and cinnamon rolls, the hot chocolate too. He surely kept the word. Initially, Sean only wanted to have a little taste of the food, but everything that she made was exceptionally delicious. They were even better than the ones he tried in restaurants. It was definitely out of his expectation that this woman could make such a scrumptious breakfast. His impression of her changed a little. Coincidentally, she turned her face toward him and their eyes met. Shawnee, what do you want to eat for dinner? I'll make it for you, she said gently. I have a dinner appointment tonight. Then he left to get changed in the bedroom without another word. This did not annoy her. It was not unusual for the boss of a multinational business to be occupied with work. However, it was still important to maintain a good relationship between them. She cleaned up the table immediately and hurried off to get changed into work clothes too. When Sean was about to leave the house, she quickly reappeared from her room with her purse. Shawnee, can you give me a lift? I'm heading off to work as well. If it's too much trouble, you can just drop me off at the subway station. Please? He pursed his lips while thinking of refusing. However, he eventually nodded upon considering that he had enjoyed the breakfast she made today a lot. The two of them took the elevator to the parking lot. Catherine thought she would be getting into a Bentley or a Maybach, but when the man stopped by the side of a white Lexus... Um, is this your car? Yep. He opened the door and sat down in the driver's seat. Confused, she followed suit and entered the car. Shawnee, why did you choose this car? This man was supposed to be the heir of a multinational business, yet he was driving a car that was worth only a little over $30,000. It's cheap and it's fuel efficient, he simply replied while igniting the car. You do know the best way to live, my exceptional husband. She turned her head aside to find a packet of cheap tissue on the dashboard. Its packaging read, Gas station. Cheapest and easiest. Catherine was confused. Did all successful bosses nowadays live frugally like this? Could it be possible that she was not treated well by the Joneses 
because she had been spending lavishly instead of saving up like other successful bosses. She fell into deep thought as she pondered over this. Ten minutes later, the car came to a halt by the subway station. He turned to face her. Off you go. Uh, <sighs> she was speechless. She only said that out of politeness, but he really did as told. Well, well, well. While suppressing the anger rising inside her, she forced a shy smile on her face. Thanks, Shawnee. The second she stepped out of the vehicle, the car sped away before she could say something else. What an annoying and cruel man. She only arrived at the company around 9 a.m. Since returning from her studies abroad, she had been working at Summit Building Design Group. It was the Jones family's biggest corporation. However, as soon as she stepped foot into the building, the project manager, James Lennon, said to her in a strange voice, You don't have to show up starting from today. This project doesn't belong to you anymore. What do you mean? James's eyes sparkled when he spotted someone behind her. Rebecca, here you are. Catherine snapped her head around and saw Rebecca approaching their direction, wearing a low-cut, knitted white top. On her right was Ethan, who was wearing a shirt of the same colour. Their arms were linked together. The sunlight that streamed into the room through the window enveloped the two of them. They looked like a blissful couple in their matching outfits.